ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وبعد Indeed all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise and seek his help. We ask for Allah's forgiveness. We take refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and from the evil consequences of our actions. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, there is none that can misguide him. And whomsoever Allah azza wa jalla allows to be misguided because he does not want guidance, there is none that can guide him. I bear witness and testify that there is no god no god no deity no object worthy of our worship except Allah alone without any partners and I bear witness and testify that Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is Allah's slave and his final messenger may the peace and blessings of Allah ta'ala be upon our prophet upon his family upon his companions and upon all those who follow him till the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made many good deeds easy for us to perform. Deeds which are very easy to perform, yet the rewards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for those of his slaves who do these deeds are immense. There are many deeds that might appear small in the eyes of people, yet the reward of these, de- these deeds on the day of judgment can be as heavy as mountains today inshallah we are going to speak about in this short time those deeds which are very easy to perform yet the rewards of those actions are immense in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after hearing these small deeds you and I we should all make the intention that there should not be a moment when we have the opportunity to do these deeds we should not allow it to go to waste rather we should be the first to come ahead and come forward and to perform these good deeds now sometimes we keep on putting off good deeds however we forget that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised great reward for those people who perform these small actions allah azza wa jalla he mentioned in the quran surah al baqarah fastabiqul khayrat hasten towards doing good deeds rush towards doing good deeds in another verse of the quran allah says wasari'u ila maghfiratin mir rabbikum wa jannatin arduha as-samawati wal ardu iddat lil muttaqin the rush towards the forgiveness of your lord hasten towards the forgiveness of your lord and work towards that jannah which is wider than the heavens and the earth which allah has made has prepared for the muttaqin for the pious people in sahih al muslim We find a narration by Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said be quick when it comes to doing good deeds hasten towards doing good deeds before you are overtaken by trials and tribulations which will be like a dark night a person is going to be a believer in the morning and he's going to turn towards disbelief and kufr in the evening in the evening he's going to be a kafir by morning he is going to turn a believer that is how difficult times are going to be so before that time comes the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said 
hasten towards doing good deeds. Let's begin with few of those small actions, easy actions, but has immense rewards. The first one I would like to mention is, before going to sleep, forgiving everyone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those people that have offended you, those people that have talked bad about you, those people that have mistreated you, forgive them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has commanded us this in the Quran, that forgive those people that mistreat you, that speak bad about you, forgive them. And what will be the reward in return? Allah's forgiveness, Allah's love, Allah's mercy. Allah mentioned in the Quran, أَلَا تُحِبُّونَ أَنْ يَغْفِرَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ Do you not want, do you not love that Allah forgives you? Do you not want that? If that is the case, then forgive one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and elders, there are many benefits for forgiving one another before you go to sleep. The first benefit is that by forgiving one another for the sake of Allah, it will help you have a good night's sleep. When someone mistreats you or says anything bad to you, you always want to take revenge. How can I say something back to him? How can I mistreat him as well? But when you forgive that person, it will help you have a good night's sleep. The second benefit is, by forgiving everyone before you go to sleep for the sake of Allah, it helps you start a bright day. In the morning, you will make, wake up with a fresh mind, with a fresh heart, with a new day. And the third benefit is, if you were to die in your sleep, by forgiving everyone before you go to sleep, you can stand in front of Allah with a clean heart. With a heart that has no enmity towards anyone. A heart that is free from jealousy. A heart that is free from envy. A heart that is free from having negative thoughts about someone else. And there are many narrations that speak about the benefit and reward for forgiving one another. For example, time is very limited, but the main part of the story is we find the Prophet Sallallahu gave the glad tidings of Jannah to one Sahabi three days in a row. What was the reason? It was because this Sahabi he used to forgive everyone for the sake of Allah before he went to sleep. Three days in a row, the Nabi of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam certified that a Sahabi is entering Jannah. The reason is because he was a person who used to forgive everyone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was the first action that you and I can perform. The second is constantly be in a state of wudu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated wudu for everyone to perform before performing any particular prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Al-Hakim, the most wise, He has legislated for the believers that before you perform any prayer, make sure that you perform wudu. Now I am not talking about doing wudu before any particular salah. What I am speaking about is being in a state of constant wudu. So even if it's not time for salah, try and be in the state of wudu. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith that it is only a true believer who will stay continuously in the state of wudu. It is only a true believer who will always be in the state of wudu. Now let me remind myself and everyone about the benefits, the rewards for performing wudu. wudu. And we all know it. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when a believer, he performs wudu, the last drop that drips from his hand, all his minor sins are forgiven by Allah Azza wa Jal. When he washes his face, when he washes his feet, all the minor sins that he has committed are forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By the end of the wudu, this person is physically clean as well as spiritually clean as well. But we are talking about being in the state of wudu, even if it's not time for salah, that this is a sign of a true believer. In another hadith we find, the rewards for performing wudu before going to sleep. This is also from the sunnah. As in a hadith we find, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, whoever performs wudu before going to sleep, just like he does before any salah, then Allah sends an angel to that person. And this angel makes dua for that person and says, Ya Allah, 
forgive your slave, he has gone to sleep in the state of wudu. Oh Allah, have mercy on your slave, he has gone to sleep in the state of wudu. This angel, he continuously makes dua for that person throughout the entire night because he went to sleep in the state of wudu. What an easy action that we can perform, yet look at the immense reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept. Along with this, my brothers and elders, is performing a two rakat prayer after performing wudu. Whenever you perform wudu, try and be a person who performs a two rakat prayer. What is the reward? We find in Sahih al-Bukhari, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anh narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he once asked Bilal radiallahu anh, O oh Bilal, after accepting Islam, do you know of any special action that you have performed? Bilal radiallahu anh, he said, I cannot recall any special action I do, O Prophet of Allah, except that after performing wudu, I pray a two rakat prayer. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh Bilal, the reason why I ask you this is, I heard your footsteps in Jannah, and this is the reason why I heard your footsteps in Jannah. That you perform a two rakat prayer after performing wudu. So this is an easy action that we can do. Follow the footsteps of Bilal radiallahu anh with ikhlas, with sincerity, and we can hope to be with Bilal radiallahu anh in Jannah bi idnillahi ta'ala. Moving on to the fourth easy action that we can do is visiting the sick, visiting those that are not feeling well, that are ill. In a hadith we find collected by Imam Tirmidhi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever goes to visit a person that is not well, that is sick, 70,000 angels make dua for that person till the evening. When that person goes to visit in the evening, 70,000 angels make dua for that person till the morning. What an easy action that we can do. We know of many people that are not feeling well, that are sick, that are ill. It is their right that we go and visit them. And by visiting them, we can earn this great reward of not seven angels, not 70 angels, not 700 angels, rather 70,000 angels will make dua for that person. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that this person will gain, will earn a house, a garden in Jannah as well because of this easy action. Moving on to the fifth easy action that we can do is the recitation of the Quran. Generally reciting any part of the Quran, it brings great reward. However, there are specific chapters of the Quran that the Prophet ﷺ has attached extra emphasis to, extra merits to. And one of those special chapters is Surah Al-Ikhlas. And I'm sure we all have memorized this surah. Do we know the rewards of this surah? The Prophet ﷺ, he once asked the companions, O oh companions, which one of you can recite one third of the Quran every night? Now the Sahabas knew that this was something difficult. So they said, O oh Messenger of Allah, which one of us can do this? It is extremely difficult to recite one third of the Quran every night. The Prophet wasallam said, reciting Surah Al-Ikhlas once is equivalent to reciting one third of the Quran. In other words, if you recite Surah Al-Ikhlas three times, it is equivalent in reward as if you have recited the entire Quran. Not only that, the Prophet wasallam said in another hadith collected by Imam Bukhari, that whoever recites Surah Al-Ikhlas ten times in one sitting, Allah will grant him a house in Jannah. How long will it take to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas ten times? Around a minute? No more than a minute will it take to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas ten times. Yet look at the reward that a house is built for you in Jannah by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this way, there are many chapters of the Quran that have immense rewards that we learn from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Moving on to the next action, and that is often we need to go to the markets to buy, to sell, or to do whatever we need to do so. Did we know that there is a specific adhkar to say before we enter the marketplace? And that is, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lahu, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-ham, yuhyi wa yumeet, wa huwa hayyun la yamut bi yadihi al-khayr, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. This is a phrase, this is an adhkar that we are supposed to read before we enter the marketplace. Do you know the reward? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever says this azkar before entering the marketplace, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant that person one million good deeds. 
One million sins will be forgiven and one million levels will be raised towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that person. After listening to this, how can we not say this next time we go to the marketplace? It is a short dua, short adhkar, yet it has immense reward promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Moving on to the seventh one very quickly. And that is, salah is a part of a Muslim's life, my brothers and elders. A Muslim cannot be without salah. Among the greatest actions after believing in the tawheed of Allah is to establish the five daily prayers. A person cannot get closer to Allah with anything except salah. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَهُوَ سَاجِدٌ فَأَكْثِرُ الدُّعَاءِ the closest a slave can be to Allah is in the position of sajda. So increase your du'as because you are the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The point I want to mention here is after performing the fara'id prayer, the sunnah prayers is what we need to attach importance to. Many of us, we only pray the fard prayer and we think that is enough for us. But the voluntary prayers, the sunnah prayers, they have a great virtue as well. Listen to the following hadith. Umm Habiba radiallahu anha, she said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever prays 12 rakats voluntary prayer, besides the fard prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build a house for him in Jannah. What are those 12 rakats? They are the two rakats sunnah before the fajr. Before the two rakats fard of fajr, the two rakats sunnah, they are included. Then the four rakats before the dhuhr, before the fard of dhuhr, four rakats. After the four rakats, four of Dhuhr, the two rakats. The two rakats after the Maghrib prayer and the two rakats after the Isha prayer. These are 12 rakats. Whoever prays this every day, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah will build a house for him in Jannah. Umm Habiba radiallahu anha, she says, the day I heard this from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from that day till the day I die, I never left, left those voluntary prayers. I never left them. Imagine this, Allah building a house for you every day in Jannah. For many of us, having houses in different parts of the world is something that makes us happy. Imagine having a house every day in Jannah built for you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is something that we should not leave. Moving on, my brothers and elders, very quickly, and that is doing the dhikr of Allah, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Constantly keeping your tongue with the busy with the dhikr of Allah. For example, <coughs> Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, There are four words which are beloved to Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, and they are Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. In another narration found in Sahih Bukhari, we find the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Kalimatani, Habibatani ila Rahman, Thaqilatani fil Mizan. There are two phrases which are very light on the tongue, easy to say. They are going to be heavy on the scales and they are beloved to the most merciful Allah. They are subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallahil azim. How difficult are they to say? In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whoever says, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lahu, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer. Whoever says this phrase 100 times a day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to write down 100 good deeds for him. 100 sins are going to be forgiven and he is going to be protected from the shaytan throughout the entire day. And Allah says, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that Allah said, Eve, Allah is going to forgive his sins, even if they are as the form of the ocean. Allah is going to forgive you. And then we find my brothers and elders, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, after performing the fard prayer, to say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. Now there are different narrations speaking about different numbers. Some say 33 times Subhanallah, 33 times Alhamdulillah, 33 times Allahu Akbar, and then ending it with La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al mulk wa lahu al hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadeer. Some narrations mention 11 times each, some narrations mention 10 times each. My brothers and elders, the reward for this is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever, there are two deeds which many people, they forget to do. But they have immense reward. And that is, number one, 
after every fourth prayer, doing the adhkar, like I just said, 33 times or 10 times or 11 times each. And the second is to say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadeer. To do these adhkar after the fourth and before going to sleep has great virtue. Many people will know it, but they will not practice it. This is what the Prophet said. The Sahaba has asked the Messenger of Allah, why? If it's so easy, why is it that few people will practice it? The Prophet wasallam said, people when they are praying, shaitan is going to come to them. And it's going to make them think of other things. You need to do this, you need to do that, you need to go here, you need to go there. And because of that, straight after the salam, they leave the adhkar and they go. And they miss out on this great virtue. Shaitan makes a person do this. And then the Prophet said the second easy action is before going to sleep to do, to do the adhkar. 33 times subhanallah, 33 times alhamdulillah, 33, 34 times Allahu Akbar. Why do people not do it then, O Messenger of Allah? The Prophet said because sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when this person wants to go to sleep, shaitan comes and makes him fall asleep before he can actually say the adhkar. So these are two practices that we should not leave. After the fourth prayer, doing the dhikr of Allah, and doing the dhikr of Allah before going to sleep. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be people of Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. May Allah allow us to worship Allah the way he deserves to be worshipped, following the manner shown and taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sahil muslimin. Fastaghfiruhu innahu wa al-ghafuru الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد The last two I will mention and we will end is walking to the masjid This is a great virtue my brothers and elders There are many of us that live close to the masjid yet we will drive a car and come to the masjid which is allowed, which is permissible but there is great reward for walking to the masjid When the sahabas heard that praying in the masjid was something rewarded they used to live far. They decided to come close to the masjid so that they can pray in the masjid. The Prophet ﷺ, when he heard of this, he said to the Sahabas, stay where you are. Because the steps that you take towards the masjid, every step that you take, Allah will grant you a reward. Every step that you take, Allah will forgive a sin. Every step that you take, Allah will elevate your status in Jannah. So this is something that we should try and do. Walk to the masjid when you have the ability to do so. As Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever does wudu at home and he walks to the masjid with the intention to perform the prayer, with each step, one reward is written down. One sin is forgiven and one level is raised. So you do the calculation and see how much reward you are getting from your house to the masjid. And the last one I will mention, my brothers and elders, and there are many. Inshallah, if I have the opportunity, in another khutbah, I will mention the following ones, bi-ithnillahi ta'ala. But I end on one, and that is saying the statement, رَضِيدُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّ وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا وَبِمُحَمَّدٍ نَبِيًّا وَرَسُولًا Three lines. How long will it take for us to memorize? Yet look at the reward. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, found in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, that whoever says these three phrases three times in the morning and three times in the evening, it becomes obligatory upon Allah to make that person pleased and happy on the day of judgment. رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّا وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا وَبِمُحَمَّدٍ نَبِيًّا وَرَسُولًا رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّا I am happy, I am pleased with my Rabb Allah. وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا I am happy with my religion Islam. وَبِمُحَمَّدٍ نَبِيًّا وَرَسُولًا صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ And I am happy, pleased with Nabi Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم being my prophet and my messenger. So easy to memorize, only take you a few minutes, yet look at the immense reward. That it becomes obligatory upon Allah to make that person happy and pleased on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And the Nabi of Allah in another narration said, whoever says this phrase three times in the morning, three times in the evening, the Nabi of Allah will hold that person's hand and lead him into Jannah. What a great reward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
allow us to be with the prophets and messengers on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us Jannah Al-Firdaus. May Allah protect us all from the fire of Jahannam. Inna Allah wa Malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi. Ya ayuha al-Ladhina aman, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Nabiina Muhammad. Wa salli ala jami' al-Anbiya wa al-Mursaleen. Wa salli ala al-Mu'minina wa al-Mu'minat wa al-Muslimina wa al-Muslimat. Rabbana faghfi lana dhunubana. Wa kafir anna sayyatina wa tawafana ma'al abrar. Rabbana atina fi al-dunya hasana. Wa fi al-akhirati hasana. Wa qina adab al-nar. Rabbana la tuzib qulubana. Ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahmatan. Innak anta al-wahab. Wa salli allahumma wa sallim wa barik ala nabiyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi. Wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen. Wa aqimi al-salaya wa rahmatullahi.